Welcome back to Dr. Read the Puddle. My name is David Reich. I'm a welding instructor, CWI and CWE here at my local community college. For all of you that hit the subscribe button and watch my videos, thank you. I sincerely appreciate it. Today we're going to talk about cylinder safety. A lot of the do's and don'ts when working with high pressure cylinders and fuel cylinders. Many years I've been teaching welding, basic welding, and I have learned that there's a lot of mistakes made when we're dealing with these cylinders. So we're gonna go over some of the, uh, the do's and don'ts of these cylinders and show you some of the safety devices that are built into the cylinders and the valves to prevent them from exploding in case they were ever in a fire. So we will start with the oxygen cylinder, which is a high pressure cylinder. So as you can see, the oxygen cylinder has a cap that screws on. Never, ever, ever try to lift that cylinder from that cap. If that cap isn't screwed on tightly and it comes flying off, it could knock you, knock your teeth out, break your chin, give you a black eye. So never, ever lift the cylinder from these caps. If you have to move the cylinder onto a cart, you can, you can bear hug it and lift it. You can also just kind of lean it up onto the cart instead of lifting it from the cap. But we'll unscrew the protective cap here. Okay, as you can see, it's got a compressed gas cylinder valve on it. These valves are different than an NP, uh, NPT fitting. These are actually compressed gas cylinder association valves meant for high pressure. Now this cylinder has a safety device that's built into it, but it's not actually in the cylinder, it's on the valve. This valve is called a burst disc. So if this cylinder were ever in a fire and pressure started to build, this burst disc would rupture and vent all that oxygen out into the room and, and keep this cylinder from, from exploding. So this burst disc, uh, it, it will burst at about 3,300 PSI. So if this cylinder starts building up pressure, that will rupture and let that, let that gas come out. Um, oxygen cylinders, believe it or not, they are very thin at the sides of them here. That wall thickness is only about an eighth of an inch. I'm not sure if you can see that, but I brought this cylinder with a hole drilled in it. It's only about an eighth of an inch. So we never, ever, ever want to take a wrench and wrap on the side of that cylinder. Because what can happen is you can cause little stress risers in that cylinder that over many times, many cycles of refilling that cylinder, you could actually have a rupture there and this cylinder could, could explode. While it may sound cool to tap that, that cylinder with a wrench, don't ever do it. And don't ever, ever lift from the cylinder caps. Big no-no when dealing with oxygen. I will also mention probably the next most important thing is always have clean hands when working around oxygen components or valves or the regulators. Don't ever have greasy, greasy hands, greasy gloves, greasy tools. Go into the, sh go into the sink wash your hands, degrease them, have a clean pair of gloves. Don't ever put grease, petroleum products around pure oxygen. It will react and it could actually explode or severely burn you or injury. So those are some of the proper ways of handling uh, high pressure oxygen cylinders and some of the safety devices built in to them to prevent them from exploding. So we'll move on to the acetylene cylinder next. Okay, moving on to the acetylene cylinder. As you can see, acetylene cylinders, they tend to be a little shorter and usually a little stockier, a little, little fatter. So acetylene cylinder is a lower pressure cylinder. It is not pressurized to the 2,000 to 2,500 PSI like the rest, of the, the rest of the high pressure cylinders that are in this video. Acetylene cylinders are, believe it or not, are not hollow. They have a porous core inside of them that's saturated with liquid acetone. Acetylene is a very unstable gas by itself. So when they saturate that porous core with acetone, it allows that acetylene to be pumped into the cylinder very slowly. The acetylene combines with the acetone and it now becomes a stable, stable gas that can be used. So uh, acetylene gas is a very, very common gas used for cutting, welding, brazing, and it has the hottest flame temperature uh, of, of the different fuel gases and does the best job when welding. So we'll remove the protective, the protective cap here. And you can see, same, same style of cap, it screws on. Now, a couple of differences with the, with the acetylene cylinders. The acetylene cylinders are, are pressurized to around 300, 350 PSI. 
they do not have a burst disc on, on the valve to protect them in case pressure builds. The acetylene cylinders have what's known as a fuse plug. So a fuse plug, as the temperature increases to, I believe, around 212 degrees, it will melt that lead center out and it will escape that gas through that little tiny hole to prevent that cylinder from exploding. Acetylene cylinders, just like anything else, need to be handled with care. If you lay them down in the back of your pickup truck on, on the way back from the filling station or wherever you, wherever you buy your acetylene gas, make sure you stand this up for about 15 or 20 minutes to allow all that liquid acetone to settle back down to the, the bottom of the cylinder. Otherwise, you could have that acetone get drawn up into your expensive regulators, come through your expensive torch handles and actually do damage to any of your seals inside of there. So we wanna keep that acetone out of the rest of the, rest of the system. So again, acetylene gas and oxygen together are very, very dangerous if not used properly. But when used in the proper way, they are very safe, and if you keep your equipment working well, keep oil and grease off of them, it should, should last. A As you can see, these are the hydrostatic test dates. The very first test was probably when the cylinder was manufactured, was 6 of 2000. And then the second one, you can see, was 6 of 2015. So this cylinder has about six more years until it has to be tested again. A couple other things about high pressure cylinders. Never leave your cylinder standing out in the middle of the shop floor without them being securely fastened to a cart or chained down to a stand or the wall. It's too easy to knock those cylinders over and if that protective cap is not on there and you knock that valve off, that cylinder becomes an unguided missile throughout your shop and I don't think you want to witness that. The other thing, your cylinders have to be hydrostatically tested every 10 years. So if you look at the top part of that cylinder and the most current date that's stamped on there is past 10 years, that cylinder will have to be retested. If you own your cylinder, the supply house will charge you a hydrostatic testing fee. If you rent or lease them, they will just do that automatically. So I hope you learned a little bit at this video. Uh, if you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button and I will make more. Thanks.